Russian Fishing 4 is a free-to-play fishing game that rests in a weird place with me. I hate many things about it, but I keep coming back to it despite those things. Whether this is due to the game being fun, or a desire to hurt myself, I don't know. Let me preface this with, I like to fish. I went fishing almost every week when I was young. But something about fishing games has always put me off. I can't tell exactly what it is, but it's probably something about pulling fish out of the water and throwing them back in like some sort of maniacal fish god or setting the hook too hard and having nothing but a pair of fish lips come ashore. And video games just don't capture that well. One day I had the urge to see if there were any fishing games on Steam. There were. Some of them cost money. Some of them were free. And others were... free. I've tried most of these, but I'll focus on Russian Fishing 4 for now. You may have guessed by the name of the game that it's about fishing in a Russian setting. Sadly, this doesn't mean getting on a boat and going all Pavlov's house on everything with a fin. It's more about living hand-to-mouth and not being sure if it's really worth continuing on. You know, that kind of Russian. The game can look nice, however, due to optimization, or more appropriately, the lack of it, I tend to run it at mostly medium settings. You're almost always staring at the water anyway, so I'm not too bothered about goofy-looking trees. Speaking of the water, I'm not sure if all the water in Russia looks like runoff from the Chocolate River from the Willy Wonka movie, but this stuff is impossible to see through. I could believe that fish don't even exist until they're biting just because you can't see them through the water. I'm from Kansas, and a lot of our streams and lakes are pretty murky, but I can still see the fish in them just fine. You never see the fish splashing around or feeding on something on the surface in this game. You'd be surprised at how much this affects the feel of the game. I said I wasn't going to get into the other games, but Ultimate Fishing Simulator has the fish visible almost all the time. And for all of that game's shortcomings, that's something that can be really nice. Besides the fish visibility, there really isn't anything wrong with the visuals to me. They stick to a reasonably detailed art style. I especially like all the effort they put in the lures, the baits, the fish themselves. Nothing really seems like it's a placeholder or otherwise rushed. Well, almost nothing. There are a few maps, and they all have unique environments. It can be nice to change things up sometimes. I don't really have anything else to say about the visuals. They're good, not phenomenal. The audio is pretty good, to be honest. Wheels sound like they should. The environment sounds nice. Line tearing at a reel sounds good. They did a good job. There isn't a whole lot of music in the game, and the tracks that are there can get repetitive after a while. I turned the music off after about an hour. Don't get me wrong, some of the tracks are nice. I just feel like there wasn't enough of them. So what's the gameplay like? Surprisingly true to life. You cast your line, you wait a while, and sometimes you find Nemo. Most of the time you don't. But you do have a lot of different ways of getting Comrade Nemo. You've got floats, spinners, spoons, feeders, jigs, wobblers, wacky worms. You can even send Nemo's friends to go get him for you. There's also all sorts of attachments and accessories for you to mess around with. You can even change individual hooks on lures if you want. It's incredible. I am an absolute fiend for games that let me Barbie around like this. So this sort of stuff is my kryptonite. And for each of these, there's a handful of variations to try as well pretty nice. So what about the actual fishing? Well, for the most part, if you just repeat what you would do in real life fishing, it'll work in the game. Once you get a fish hooked, the actual fun begins. For the feisty ones, you'll have to manage line tension and reeling speed along with how much you want to lift the rod to help. Depending on your energy, you might not be able to at all. Oh yeah, this is a survival game. You have your energy, your hunger, your health, and your comfort. Depending on these, you might not be able to keep fighting a big fish. You have to eat or you'll starve. You have to stay comfortable, otherwise it's harder to regain your energy. If your energy is too low, you won't be able to cast your line very far or bring in the fish effectively. Now, I've never seen the health bar move. The rumor I've seen is that if it drops to zero, you die and lose all your skills. What? Oh yeah, this is an RPG. You've got skills for fishing with certain rods and reels, certain baits, digging up worms, making those worms into third world hors d'oeuvres. The more you use a skill, the better it gets. You also have your overall level. When you level up, you get a skill point to put into one of the perks in a skill tree. 
Leveling up is also how you unlock new places to go and things to do. It starts to take a long time after the first few levels, even with a premium account. Oh, that's right, this is a free-to-play game. Let's talk about the monetization. A premium account gives you things like better experience rewards, player-to-player -player item trading, better chances at succeeding when you're making the hors d'oeuvres, the usual free-to-play premium account things. The pricing on some of these choices is pretty hilarious. I'm curious as to how many people have paid for the 50-year option. But wait a second, there's also gold. Normally you pay for things using silver, but for a lot of things you can choose to pay with gold instead. This can be a difference of thousands of silver versus a single gold for the same item. But how often do you need to buy things, though? Let's get into that can of worms. But with silver, I'm not made of money. You are going to be very lucky to keep a lure for more than a day or two. This game is ruthless and will take away a 30 silver lure you just bought within a couple casts, often on the first one. If you're really unlucky, you'll break your reel and have to repair it. If you don't want to pay with gold, it'll take in-game time. This by itself isn't crazy, but everything just adds up. Buy a new lure that costs 20 silver. Travel to another map which costs around 8 silver. You're hungry, and this map doesn't have the free food cart. 3 silver. Nemo was too strong and took your line lure and broke your reel. Better go repair it and get a new lure. Even when they're not breaking all your shit, these fish are damn hard to bring in. You can spend several minutes barely hanging on before your line will suddenly snap. And I swear, sometimes you aren't fishing so much as you are battling the creatures of the lake. In a matter of minutes, you've lost half your money and need to go do some careful fishing with the cheapest gear you can buy, or the loner rod, to get it back. Now, this wouldn't be the worst problem if the fish were worth more money, but on average, each one is worth less than 10 cents. Or silver cents. Whatever the fuck. You could sell a hundred fish and only make 30 silver. That's not even the price of a single lure once you get past using the cheapest gear. You can do special orders for the cafe, but this leads us to another problem. Maybe the worst one in the whole game. After catching a few fish, Nemo will pack up his bags and move to Los Angeles. I don't mean he'll move to another part of the lake. He'll leave the map entirely. You need to travel to a new zone or wait several in-game days for him to return. This massively increases the downtime of the game. It also makes those special orders even harder to complete because they won't accept fish from a different map. Between the grind for experience, the grind for money, and the grind for the fish themselves, this game gets unbearable a lot of the time. The core of the game is fun, but it's like getting hazed into a gang. Every so often I think, oh this isn't so bad, I can deal with this for a little bit, and then I get kicked in the gut and I wish it would end. So that's Russian Fishing 4, the free-to-play fishing game that I continue to play because it's the lesser of two evils. Let me know your thoughts on the game or the video. Thanks for watching.